Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Ah, thank you very much for coming at such an early and ungodly hour. So I hope you like the talk, which is called From Sri Aurobindo to the Grateful Dead, Meta Normal States in the Geography of Consciousness. And I thought that to start out, we could try to remember or imagine what it's like to slip into one of those metanormal states with the Grateful Dead. So just for the moment, let's pretend we're at a Grateful Dead concert. Okay? Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> and it's, uh, let's just say it's the middle of the second set. They're, they're doing a rousing version of playing in the band, and it sounds really great. You know, it's glorious. We're happy to be here. And then they hit into that uh, middle part, you know, the improvisation, the extended improvisation, and the notes start spinning out. <coughs> and those long, complex thought forms taking us deeper and deeper into music. Jerry comes out with this <laughs> ethereal <laughs> guitarist that takes off, you know, like a ship sailing into the stars you know, across the view. And after, after a while, we notice <clears throat> we've gone from listening to the notes to listening behind the notes. And the reality of the situation is starting to shift a little in the feelings, getting denser and more wonderful. It's like we're looking out into the cosmos we're filled with amazement and awe at this beautiful music. We're filled with light, with happiness, and joy. You know, and as we listen, as we listen, the, the volume increases and the power increases, and there's this surge of electricity <laughs> Some guy across the that goes through us, all of us, you know, the band and the audience, and suddenly something clicks. And it becomes this very multi-dimensional experience. And we realize we're in the zone, okay? The famous Grateful Dead zone. So the question I want to ask in today's talk is, what does that mean? What is exactly, what is the zone? What is that experience we have with the Grateful Dead? that's been called the touch of the miraculous. You know, magic, hyperspace, transcendence, the X factor. You know, well, whatever it is, we know it's happening on purpose and by design because from the beginning, the Grateful Dead discovered that phenomenon and dedicated themselves to pursuing it. Uh, Phil, Phil Lesh says, when we first started, we knew we could be a good band but this went to some other level. The reality was so immediate, it couldn't be denied. It was fraught with meaning of greater breadth and scope and significance than I'd ever imagined. I thought, we're on to something here. This is worth pursuing as far as it takes us. Jerry Garcia says, when we get on stage, what we really wanna happen is we wanna be transformed from ordinary players into extraordinary ones, like forces of a larger consciousness. And the audience wants to be transformed from whatever ordinary reality they may be in to something a little wider, something that enlarges them. Can you all hear me, by the way? Okay, but when, you know, when it comes to uh, looking a little closer at the experience and trying to pin it down, we get, you know, like fuzzy and mumbly and articulate and we, we can't explain what happens because it's very hard to describe the indescribable. And I think my favorite, my favorite attempt is by this fellow named uh, Michael Newman who says, call it the X factor, call it Godhead, call it the zone, call me when it happens, <laughs> <laughs> you know? So sometimes we just, you know, beg it and we just say there is nothing like a Grateful Dead concert. But, but personally, I wanted a little more information about what was happening. I wanted a GPS system for those other realities. I wanted to know what they were 
and how they related to each other, and most of all, how to get there more often and stay there. So I went looking for answers. And I went to religion, you know, Eastern, Western, a little bit of shamanism. And religion did offer some whys and wherefores of mystical experience. But for me, the explanations seemed as if they were based in theologies and moralities and social codes that might have been appropriate once, but for this day and age uh, seemed either too narrow or insufficiently relevant. Um, or in some cases, infra-rational rather than supra-rational. And certainly, none of them seem to match with this uh, misfit, fire-breathing, 190 IQ, weird, grateful dead, dragon monster thing that we all <laughs> know and love. I guess the last straw for me was at a Denver show in 1973. So picture this. Grateful Dead, they're on, they're playing the other one. And they are smoking the joint. Okay, it's all hell is breaking loose. It's loud. It's scary. It's omnipotent. It's magnificent. And right in the middle of that, I go shooting up through the top of my head, spread out like that. And everything stops, okay? It's like I'm in this vast chamber where there's no sound, no motion, no me, just an utter, immovable, silent, perfect peace right in the middle of this ear-splitting rock and roll concert. <coughs> so that, you know, got my attention. That blew me away uh, so much so that I sold everything ran away with a mad Mexican yogi, went to India, uh, joined a gypsy caravan, lived under bridges, uh, studied cosmic determinants and indeterminables, and discovered Sri Aurobindo. Uh, Sri Aurobindo, who incidentally grew up in England, was a 20th century political revolutionary who helped start the Indian independence movement. And he was also a professor, a philosopher, and a mystic poet who mastered 11 languages, including Latin, Greek, German, French, Italian, Bengali, Sanskrit, etc. And uh, Patiram Sorokin, who founded the Department of Sociology at Harvard, says, Sri Aurobindo's writings are among the most important works of our time in philosophy, ethics, and humanities. And in fact, Sri Aurobindo was nominated for the 1950 Nobel Prize in Literature. But he was also a great yogi, and his greatest legacy is spiritual. And he's the only one I've ever found, at least to my satisfaction, who offers a, at 30 volumes, uh, he, who offers a framework wide enough to encompass the multi-dimensional complexity, the massive power, and the fantastic richness of the Grateful Dead. <laughs> So uh, let's get into it. Jerry once said, I think consciousness is really far out stuff myself. <laughs> <laughs> he says, it might be that consciousness is the whole reason there is a universe. There might not be a universe apart from consciousness. According to Sri Aurobindo, Jerry is right. Sri Aurobindo says the entire universe emerges from consciousness. Consciousness is the omnipresent reality underlying all manifestation. Everything in the universe is made of consciousness. And this consciousness extends from the macroscopic to the microscopic on one continuous spectrum, but it goes through different phases and states. You know, like you could think of steam moving into water, moving into ice, you know. <coughs> They look and behave very differently, but they're all gradations of one substance. So it's like that with the spectrum of consciousness. Consciousness moves through various phases and states, but it's in essence, it's gradations of one thing. So Sri Aurobindo calls these various phases or states planes of consciousness. You could call them dimensions if you wanted. But here's the basic map. Up here, uh, is the transcendent, and this is the unified field mystics talk about, uh, and it's an unmanifest reality whose nature is infinite existence, 
infinite force and also infinite bliss. And uh, that blends down into what Sri Aurobindo calls the supermind, which is <clears throat> where the transcendent morphs into form and starts to manifest the physical universe. And blending down from that are the levels of universal mind, universal life, and by the time you get to the bottom, you get matter, where consciousness is completely concentrated in a sort of oblivious density of external form. And each of these planes has its seasons, its evenings, and songs <laughs> of its own. Or you could say, uh, like a different set of physics, sort of, for each plane or different characteristics and properties, which we won't get into for the moment. But anyway, that's like the superstructure of the universe, the foundation for the world as we know it. Okay, now as humans, we're tapped into all of these planes. See, the plot thickens, because right at the core of our being, there's a series of what you could call receivers, okay, that pick up the different channels on the different levels. Sometimes they're called chakras, okay? And each one has a broadband connection to one of those planes of consciousness. Okay, so these chakras. Located in a column running through the central core of our being, one on top of the other, which forms a vertical axis of consciousness from the lowest to the highest planes. Inside us, okay? Access all areas. <laughs> See, it's like a backstage pass for everything in consciousness. Okay, so the central core, it's just like in the science fiction movies, you know, Total Recall, Star Wars, where you go to the center of the space station and there's this vast vertical tube going up and down. So um, there's the central core just like that in us. And it's an actual infrastructure. It's subtle, but it's real. And we can learn to move the consciousness up and down along <coughs> that column. So it's kind of like hopping on an elevator. And the different floors are different levels of consciousness. And we're moving then between planes, or you could say between vibrations or functionalities or dimensions of consciousness. Okay, back to the Grateful Dead. If by chance <coughs> we take the elevator up during Terrapin, <laughs> a likely event, <laughs> Uh, we may be inundated with a feeling of infinite being, living light, massive power, because we're accessing the native modality of those over, overhead planes. And now you know what happened to me in 1973 when I went up out of the top of the head out here. If by chance Bobby takes us violently down a few <laughs> floors, when he cranks into I Need a Miracle. Well, no. <laughs> well, no, we're on the life energy plane, which is full of passion and vitality and desire. And if we end up in a Jerry song, you know, like So Many Roads, we'll know we're on the, life ener uh, the upper life energy plane, which is the seat of refined emotions and love. Okay. So what I'm getting at, what I'm getting at is that this layered series of planes of consciousness, one on top of the other, and the movement of our awareness up and down through these levels, check it out. It's the vertical axis of the X factor, okay? And, and it takes some time to be able to identify these levels phenomenologically because they blend into each other. Remember the merging and the blending? And also, it's not a matter of just learning terms. It's a matter of perception and experience. But once we learn to identify the modalities, it's so cool because we can know exactly where we are in the zone by the characteristics of whatever experience we're having. And this will help us to know what's going on when things start to get strange. And you know they're gonna get stranger because as we've seen, consciousness moves up and down on a vertical axis, but it can also move on a horizontal axis. And on the horizontal axis, we stay on one plane. You know, we're not moving up and down between levels, but we widen, we get bigger. And here's how that happens. Sherabindo says the small person 
we seem to be on the surface, this frontal external being we think we are, is not all we are. He says, forgotten vastnesses await discovery deep within. Unmeasured breadths and depths of being are ours, but we're usually not aware of them because there's a veil between our normal surface consciousness and this inner consciousness. Of course, it's the magic of the Grateful Dead that takes us through the veil. And once we go through, the whole quality of our awareness changes. You know, it's like things feel kind of inside out and our per perceptions feel odd and uh, the air gets kind of thicker and um, the sense of who we are starts to expand. So if anyone in this room maybe has experienced some of those weird symptoms, that's what it feels like to go into the inner consciousness. And it feels different because the consciousness is getting wider. It's fanning out from a small point of surface awareness to a larger inner consciousness and eventually to what's called the cosmic consciousness. In other words, here's where we are at the beginning of a show. <laughs> <laughs> That's Bill and Ted, you know, preparing. <laughs> preparing for an excellent adventure. <laughs> and this is the veil that separates us from the inner consciousness. The music helps us tunnel through the veil. And as we, uh, where are we? And the further in we go, the more the ego fades, the more powerful and more universal the consciousness becomes. And right here is where Jerry says, to get really high is to forget yourself. And to forget yourself is to see everything else and to see everything else is to become an understanding molecule in evolution, a conscious tool of the universe. Okay, and another very interesting thing about this expansion is that it can occur on any level on the vertical plane. Okay, so we can get huge and cosmic on the mental plane. And that's where we get those mammoth epiphanies, you know, the great realizations that come to us during the show. We can get huge and cosmic on the life energy plane. And that's where, you know, you feel that infinite. You become that infinite surge of power, like surfing on a tidal wave. You can experience it on the physical, which is probably what's happening with the, with the spinners. Okay, and, and to make it even more interesting, you can get cosmic on several levels at once, or even all levels at once, okay? But, a caveat. <laughs> when we go into those inner states, we're not in Kansas anymore. <laughs> Toto. <laughs> Sri Aurobindo says we can find ourselves in a chaos of unfamiliar or supernormal experiences, subliminal or cosmic forces that may <clears throat> overwhelm us. And there are the hallucinations which Sri Aurobindo says are reflections, misrepresentations, or transcriptions in the mind and senses of things that do exist outside ordinary mental and sensory perception. Okay, so how is it? that when we're moving around in these altered states, pushing the edge of reality with the Grateful Dead, it can be very weird. How is it that in the middle of all that, we feel safe? It's because behind all that and at the core of the Grateful Dead is the awakened power of the soul. Sri Aurobindo says, we hold within us an inner divinity greater than mind, life, and body. And this, he says, is our very inmost being, the essence of who we are. He borrows a word from the Greek, psyche, okay, psyche, and calls this the psychic being. It's located deep within, right behind, behind the heart. He says it's an ever pure flame, immaculate, luminous, directly aware of truth of being and truth of nature. And this inmost part of us is what wakens when Jerry plays the music of our hearts, as Steve Silberman calls it. And this is the grateful in Grateful Dead. And this is the heart of gold 
in Heart of Gold Band, the oneness and the warmth and the goodness and the love. And uh, it's this psychic being that brings the touch of the sacred. You know, and I'll, I'll cite some poetry from Sri Aurobindo to describe what happens at a Grateful Dead concert when the psychic being awakens in 20,000 people. He says we hear music that can immortalize the mind and make the heart wide as infinity. We feel immortal sweetness clasping immortal might, heart sensing heart, thought looking straight at thought, and the delight when every barrier falls and the transfiguration and the ecstasy. And interestingly enough, this psychic being is at the nexus of those two axes of consciousness that we were talking about. It's right here at the center. Mm -hmm. And that's the infallible guide that keeps us safe when we go up and down and in and out of Never Everland. And that's why things we've never seen will seem familiar because the psychic being is immortal and remembers infinity. Okay, so in summary, we've talked about the vertical axis of consciousness where we can move up and down through the different levels or planes of awareness and about the horizontal axis of consciousness where we increase the breadth and scope of our awareness and finally about the inmost psychic being that anchors us as we move through those various <coughs> adventures. And what, ge what this gives us is a set of coordinates you know, to move through the geography of consciousness and apply today while continuing to experience the Grateful Dead X Factor via recordings and videos and webcasts like the awesome one last week and radio shows and dead related concerts and, and conferences <coughs> and, and other concert, concerts and so <coughs> forth. Uh, one last point. <laughs> case, case you can't see it, the sign says drugs. Doing nothing has never been so amazing. Okay, so, so you know the joke. What did one deadhead say to the other when the drugs were off? Music sucks. Yeah, this, what is this crappy music? Okay, so in view of the counterculture history of the Grateful Dead, it's a fair and perhaps necessary to ask, is it just the drugs? Short answer, no. Drugs are one way into the zone, and there are others. And certainly in my case, I know it's not the drugs, because due to a series of horrendous trips, I had to quit psychedelics before I ever got into the Grateful Dead. And as for inhaling, of the 57 odd shows I went to, I went to 51 absolutely straight. Okay, so that's why, that's why I know that there are other ways to access the zone. And that basically what makes it work is focus, you know, that is concentration, intention, and practice. The more we do it, the easier it gets. And certainly, uh, one good way to do it is by sitting under the headphones with Grateful Dead. <laughs> okay, so this is the main point I want to make in this talk. This is the take home. Sherabindo says, we can build bridges between these metanormal states and our surface awareness. Uh, these states, he says, and I know from experience, are accessible, reproducible, navigable, and they can come at will and be strengthened over time. And these profound realities are part of our larger, truer being, uh, our greater human heritage, you could say. So all those times, we thought we were seeing truth. Maybe we were. And maybe all those times, we thought we saw the divine. We did. And all those times, we thought we discovered the secrets of the universe. We had. And all this is part of what Jerry Garcia calls bigger and better things for consciousness. <laughs>